or cats are important members of our family. It is important to take the proper precautions to keep your cat safe, such as reducing the risk of transmission for deadly cat viruses or recognizing the signs and symptoms of common illnesses so you can seek veterinary help for your cat. Early detection is extremely important and usually leads to better treatment outcomes. I am the cat butler, and today I'm going to talk about five common cat diseases and how you can prepare for them. Chronic kidney disease is the persistent loss of kidney function over time. It happens in 10% of cats over the age of 10 and over 30% of cats over the age of 15. Early treatment can improve and prolong the lives of cats with this disease. Cats with chronic kidney disease experience a buildup of waste products in the bloodstream that are normally removed or regulated by the kidneys. This buildup leads to weight loss and makes the cat feel ill. The cats lose their ability to concentrate their urine and as a result, they urinate in greater volumes and drink more water to compensate. If you see your cat urinating more than normal, you should take your cat to the vet just to be safe. A blood and urine test are used to help diagnose if the kidneys are functioning properly. If you want to catch chronic kidney disease earlier, a recently developed blood test to assess levels of SDMA or naturally occurring biological marker for kidney function can be used to determine if early kidney failure is occurring. This will help your veterinarian provide treatment for your cat at a much earlier stage in the disease and help your cat live a lot longer. Treatment usually includes dietary modification and hydration. One way to keep your cat well hydrated is feeding your cats wet food over dry food. Wet food contains almost 70% moisture content versus 10% in dry food. So it is recommended to feed cats over the age of 10 wet food to keep them well hydrated. Cats get most of their moisture from their food as they were a desert animal and survived on very little water intake. Diabetes is a condition in which the pancreas fails to regulate blood sugar. The body cannot properly produce or respond to the hormone insulin. This results in elevated levels of sugar glucose in the blood, which is the main source of energy for the body. Left untreated, it can lead to weight loss, loss of appetite, dehydration, and even death. The two most common signs of diabetes noticed by owners at home are weight loss, despite a good appetite, and increased thirst and urination. The vet will diagnose diabetes by demonstrating persistent elevated glucose levels in a cat's blood and urine. Diabetes is a treatable condition. Early diagnosis and aggressive treatment can improve the lifespan and quality of life for your cat. Treatment includes dietary and insulin therapy. The goal is to control normal blood glucose levels and manage weight loss. One of the most important factors that lead to diabetes in cats is obesity. Fat cells produce hormones that make the body less responsive to insulin. Dry food or kibble also contributes to obesity in most cats, as it is mostly carbohydrates. In nature, cats are carnivores and don't require carbohydrates in their diet. Eating carbohydrate-rich meals leads to sudden spikes in blood sugar levels which increase a cat's demand for insulin by the pancreas. This eventually wears the organ out, and the cat will need insulin injections to survive. The cat does not need the influx of carbohydrates, and as a result, this leads to weight gain. The dietary treatment aims to reduce the weight of your cat through a low-carb and high-protein diet. This includes high-quality wet food or a raw meat diet. Lastly, Insulin therapy requires insulin injections delivered under the skin every 12 hours. This helps to control the blood glucose level. With early aggressive treatment of diabetes, many cats will enter a state of diabetic remission, meaning they're able to maintain normal blood sugar levels without insulin injections. In order to reduce the chances of diabetes and obesity in the future, I feed my ragdoll cats Timo and Arya a raw meat diet, and also give them plenty of exercise every day. Oof, I think I need to exercise too. If you're interested in learning more about a raw meat diet, I'll link the video in the description below. If you thought this video was helpful, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. 
We make videos on helping you become the best cat owner. So please join us. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM, is the most common cardiac disease in cats. Affected cats are at risk of sudden cardiac death due to defects in the heart. The heart walls thicken, thereby decreasing the heart's efficiency and causing symptoms in other parts of the body. The condition is prevalent in certain breeds like Maine Coon, Ragdoll, British Shorthair, Sphinx, American Shorthairs, and Persian Cats. Scientists have identified gene mutations in Ragdoll and Maine Coon cats that link it to HCM. The HCM mutation increases the likelihood of a cat having sudden cardiac death. This suggests genetics play a role. Currently, genetic tests for the HCM mutation are only available in Ragdoll and Maine Coon cats. As scientists do more research, more genes linked to HCM will be identified for other breeds. Breeders would then be able to remove the HCM gene from the breeding population. Timo and Arya are ragdoll cats and both were tested for HCM by the breeder and are HCM negative. As a result, they are less likely to develop HCM. Diagnosing HCM starts with a physical examination by a veterinarian that may reveal a heart murmur or abnormal heart sound and is later diagnosed by echocardiography, a technology that uses sound waves to create an image of the heart that confirms a diagnosis and determines the severity of the condition. HCM has no known cure, but a specialized treatment plan can help manage the heart rate, alleviate lung congestion, and prevent the formation of blood clots. This video is sponsored by Base Paws, a cat DNA company. Their goal is to improve the lives of cats around the world by understanding genetically what makes each cat unique. They offer a health report that looks at over 65 health markers associated with 43 diseases to understand your cat's health and genetic illnesses. This report covers diseases like HCM and other rare genetic diseases that can help you keep a lookout for anything your cat may be predisposed to developing. In addition to the health report, Base Paws offers a breed test to figure out your cat's breed's composition and breed similarities. You just have to swab your cat and send the sample to the lab for your results. For the month of December, Base Paws is providing a free dental health report and a free subscription to First Vet for six months. Base Paws has kindly provided my viewers with a $45 off the Base Paws breed and health DNA test. Use the code THECATBUTLER to get $45 off your purchase. Over 50% to 90% of cats older than 4 years of age suffer from some form of feline dental disease. Dental disease causes serious pain and discomfort and can cause a cat to stop eating. Fortunately, dental disease is largely preventable with appropriate preventative dental care and monitoring. The three most common dental diseases in cats are gingivitis, periodontitis, and tooth resorption. Gingivitis is a condition in which the gums around the teeth become inflamed, characterized by swelling, redness, and in severe cases, bleeding of the gums. When plaque is not removed from the teeth, it hardens into tartar and makes it easy for disease-causing bacteria to attach to the cat's teeth. The bacteria then damages the cells that form a barrier between the gums and teeth. The inflammation is an immune response to the bacteria and makes the gum very painful for the cat. Gingivitis can be treated with regular toothbrushing, antibiotics, or dental cleaning which requires anesthesia. If gingivitis is not treated, it progresses to periodontitis and cannot be reversed. In periodontitis, the tissues that attach the tooth to the underlying gums and bone are gradually destroyed by the bacteria and the inflammation caused by the cat's own immune system. This eventually results in tooth loss. In most cases, treatment includes dental cleaning and in some cases, extraction of the teeth. Tooth resorption is the progressive destruction of the crown or root of the tooth that results in holes in the affected teeth. Once the sensitive parts of the tooth are exposed, it becomes intensely painful and tooth extraction is the only humane option. The best way to prevent all dental disease is to remove plaque and tartar buildup by brushing your cat's teeth daily. Timo and Arya, 
it is time to brush your teeth. I brush Timo and Arya's teeth daily, but it can be a struggle. It usually involves me chasing Arya around the house. If you're interested in learning more about how to brush your cat's teeth, I'll link the video in the description below. Feline Leukemia Virus, or FELV, is a deadly virus that destroys the cat's immune system, much like HIV in humans. The virus resides in stray cats and is contagious. The infection leads to three deadly outcomes. The first outcome is a weakened immune system that allows more infections to occur that would not normally cause a problem in healthy cats. The second outcome is severe anemia. And lastly, cancer. FELV causes a mutation in the cell's genetic code to make it more cancerous, and this leads to tumors in the body months and years after the infection. The virus is transmitted through bodily fluids, such as a bite wound, mutual grooming, kittens born to infected mothers, and at times through the shared use of litter boxes and feeding dishes. Kittens are more susceptible to FELV infection than adult cats. However, even adult cats can become infected if sufficiently exposed. Studies have shown that 80 to 90% of FELV infected cats die within 3 to 4 years of diagnosis. There is no treatment for this disease, and the best way to protect your cat is to prevent exposure to FELV infected cats in the first place. Steps to protect your cat include keeping your cat indoors, testing all new cats entering the household for FELV to reduce infection, getting your cat the FELV vaccine, and parental supervision when your cats are outdoors. Timo, I'm going to be watching you like a hawk when we are outside. You're not going to be out of my sight. I hope you found the information useful. Early detection is extremely important and usually leads to better treatment outcomes. If you thought this video was helpful, drop the video a like. Say bye Timo and Arya.